Sunday morning as a church body. And that's what Service Sunday is all about, is loving on our, our community. So uh, we uh, did it last year. It was a great success. We want to do it again. So if you're interested, uh, please sign up. And uh, we'll uh, be in communication with uh, everyone about what the plans are exactly. Uh, another thing we want to mention is the night before that, we have our outdoor worship night here in, uh, in the yard on July 28th at 7 p.m. So that'll be our, our large group uh, worship meeting. And we'd like to make sure that you guys are aware of that and uh, certainly welcome to come and bring anybody that uh, maybe has no experience with this church body. It's a great way to get them in on a Saturday night and to have some uh, good time with us. So uh, another quick reminder, a ladies' prayer time is this Wednesday, July 18th at 10 a.m. in the basement, 10 o'clock in the morning, July 18th for the ladies. And then we have another clipboard that I'm going to pass around. There's only one of them, so we're going to have to make sure that it gets... Uh, to all sections here, and that's for the, the fair water booth. If you're not familiar with our church and what we've done over the, I don't know, last six, seven years, something like that, uh, we give out free water at the fair during the fair time, and it's been a great success, and it's just a way that we can bless our community once again. No strings attached, but uh, we do make it clear as to who it is that uh, is giving out the water, and we want to make sure that we're, uh, we're blessing uh, those around us that are at the fair. So please sign up if you haven't already. A um, couple other things I want to mention to you is that over the Labor Day weekend, we have a couple of uh, family camps that are available to you. And I'd like to, you know, for those of you that are interested in that, uh, start thinking about signing up for those. One is at Eastern Montana Bible Camp. And uh, it's been going for a lot of years and uh, just a great camp. If you want to go ahead and take your kids and uh, take the family there, I would encourage you to do that. We have a new one that's uh, being offered for uh, all of the, the community-wide churches that's also happening in Medora that weekend, and that is the Return to the Cross uh, family camp down there. And their primary focus is uh, getting to, uh, a, a vast array of different churches involved and going down there to Medora, spending some time at a really nice camp facility. Uh, praying over uh, the city of Sydney and the surrounding area. So if that's a camp that you're interested in, you can talk to me or, or you can uh, contact Doug Hall. He's the one that's uh, heading that up. And uh, we just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. They're going to try to get a sense of how many people are interested in going in the next couple of weeks so they can start divvying up all the different, uh, different places that people can stay. There's anything from uh, really nice dormitories all the way through uh, RV hookups and places to throw up a tent. So uh, if you're interested in that, and that's the Return to the Cross uh, family camp in Medora, North Dakota, on uh, Labor Day weekend, same thing. So uh, I think that one starts uh, late afternoon on Friday, and they'll be wrapped up by Sunday afternoon that weekend. So, all right. With that, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into... More worship. More worship, you bet. Oh, yeah. Please stand with us. First <clears throat> um, Peter 1, 7 says, These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. That's my prayer for us today, throughout the whole service, is that <clears throat> we would take time this morning to praise our Savior through genuine faith in Him, bring Him glory and honor. Amen? Amen. Great is the
joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble If I could have the ushers go ahead and come on up. I'm going to take just a couple minutes to pray and uh, want to just uh, encourage you that um, if you have a prayer need, uh, just go ahead and let uh, one of us elders know and uh, the elders that are here today as 
Perry and myself, and uh, I think Rod's at work, so, and pastor's on vacation. Um, anyways, you can also write a prayer request on your bulletin and uh, kick that into the back office there, or if you haven't uh, time to write it down, you can put it in the uh, offering plate as well. So now let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for how much you love us and who you are as a magnificent creator of the world and lover of our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you would um, bless those that are here today and bless those that are not here today, that you would be with them in a very real and tangible way and guide their steps, guide their thoughts. Let them know how much you love them, how much you care for them, and how much you are undergirding and supporting them. Lord, we also ask that you would bless our time as we listen to Harry. We ask that you would anoint him mightily today to give your words to us, that we might receive a fresh word from you. We ask that you would also uh, be blessing anyone's needs, that you would meet those needs, whether it be physical, emotional, financial, relational. Lord, you are in the business of knowing our every detail. And Lord, we know that you are there willing to help, willing to meet us in our place of need. Lord, we also want to lift before you the offering that is about to be given. We ask that you would bless it mightily for the work of your kingdom that would come back hundredfold and that you would bless the giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sing with me. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and grace. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. And grace.
more time. Let's hear you shout it. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath. Pray we don't rest another minute without giving you the praise and honor you deserve. Lord, if we haven't already entered in to worship with you, Lord, I pray now would be that time. Lord, as we hear from your word, I pray that you speak. Lord, we pour out our praise before you. Lord, let us not take for granted the hope we have in you and the mission you have set out before us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Check, check. All right. Well, good morning. Whew, a little sweaty up here. I'm sorry. It's a couple times there. I couldn't see even the page in front of me. So my name is Harry Ozerick. I'm the uh, assistant pastor here. Um, and you're stuck with me preaching at you today. So if I don't do well, you guys, you guys, yeah, I know. <laughs> Confidence is inspiring there. Thank you. Um, you know who to complain to if I don't do well today, so Paul will be back. He isn't gone forever. Um, but, uh, I was leading up to this, um, trying to think of what I wanted to preach on. I'm preaching this Sunday, and I am preaching next Sunday. Hopefully that doesn't empty out the church, but, you know, um, and so uh, if you, if you hadn't heard, um, myself and 11 other brave souls took 22 youth um, to Hayes, Montana this summer, right after they got done with school. I mean, they finished school on Friday, and we left that Saturday, May 27th, I think, right? And on this trip, um, <clears throat> the two times we've done it, I set out before us uh, a book of Scripture for us to go through as a ministry while we're there, while we're serving. And this year, um, <clears throat> as I talked with my uh, leaders and shared with them where my heart was at, um, fell on First Peter. And so if you'd go to your Bibles, please, and open up First Peter. A little background on First Peter. It is written by Peter. So real, real head scratcher on that one. Um, and this is the same Peter that denied... Uh, knowing Jesus three times. This is also the same Peter that 
God chose to be the lightning rod, if you will, of building his church. Um, Go read Acts 2. And he was foundational in the building of the church. Just a quick definition of the church. The church is not a building. The church is God's people. You and me. This book, 1 Peter, was written to the scattered Jews. And it was written to give hope, encouragement, and the desire to inspire loyalty to Christ. In the midst of hopelessness, in the midst of many trials, and Peter had seen much suffering already. And God burdened him his heart to give encouragement to his fellow believers. And so that's where we're at in First Peter. That's where that book brings us to. And so I'm just going to read this if we could. First Peter 1 through 12. To God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Can I get an amen for that, please? And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Can I get another amen for that, please? If you can't tell, I love this passage. This passage is like a battle cry. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And he finishes with, concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that has come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the things that have been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things Uh, Brielle always asks Paul or myself whenever we're preaching, what's the title? What's the title? And as I read this, the the phrase that kept coming to mind, even though I I think part of me just kind of wanted to push it away, I don't know why, um, was be blessed. Maybe that's too forward, you know, like, that's what like kept getting impressed upon me is be blessed. Peter's trying to tell these Christian Jews, be blessed. We look at verse 2, and it talks about how we've been chosen. We have purpose. We have been designed, picked by our Father in heaven. That is something to praise him for. We've also been sprinkled by the blood. If we come into relationship with him, we submit ourselves. We repent from our sinful nature. Give God the wheel, if you will. 
We are sprinkled with the blood. Old Testament, we had to make sacrifices. Christ fulfilled that atonement. We no longer need to make animal sacrifices. Christ sprinkled his blood, poured his blood for us. The blood of the purest lamb, our Savior, the blood that saves. Please understand, I'm not sitting here sprinkling myself with blood. That'd be weird. Okay? Hope we all understand the blood we're talking about is blood that was already spilt for us. That now by the power of God's grace and sacrifice, and Jesus' grace and sacrifice washes us clean. That is something to praise God for. That is an immense blessing. If you go down to verse 4, we have an inheritance. Not an inheritance that will end up fading or run out or go dry. Not an inheritance that will cause division. Not an inheritance that will cause hurt or anger. But an inheritance that will bring forth, bring forth life. An inheritance that will never die or perish or run out or run dry. Verse 6, because of this salvation, because of this faith, because of this reliance on God, we can rejoice through trial. That was a hard one for me to put in there, to be honest with you. Because I've spoken with some of you and know that those that are going through difficult trials or have gone through very difficult trials, that's not such an easy thing to say. Just found out another one of Tesha's aunts, uncles, has cancer. We're adding it up on her side. It's been like five or six different family members alive or recently passed away that have had cancer. There's another one. We lose Diane and we're praying for her. It's hard. It's hard to look at somebody that's going through that and say rejoice. But again, Peter's not talking about <clears throat> liking our circumstances. He's talking about relying on the faith we have in God and being able to rejoice knowing that this isn't the end. Amen? We see in verse 8 and 9, Peter giving them a, that away. For loving and following someone they do not see. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. And why? For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Be blessed. That's not something to take over, be overly proud of. But I think for me, as I read this, and I think, I don't know, 
I know Dave read it a few times in preparation for the trip. I think I read it like, like five or six times. And still on the trip, I'm sitting there with the youth and Tim and Ben, and we're going through it. I'm like, oh, I didn't see that before. And oh, I didn't see that. But what kept coming back to me is, man, do I take for granted these 12 verses. take this for granted sometimes. We cannot live and say we are Christians and live separate from this passage. This passage must be tied to our hip. It must go with us wherever we go. The challenge I had for us on the mission trip to our um, small family, Tunnel Snakes, way to go. Mm -hmm. Take 10 seconds every morning and think on the gift you have. Let's just do five seconds of silence right now. Good. For some, that may have felt like an eternity. Okay, 10 seconds isn't that long, but it sure gives you plenty of time to take a step back. To look. We cannot live outside of these blessings. We have to dwell on them. To bring them to our forefront. To not take them for granted. That we've been chosen. That we've been washed clean. That we have an inheritance. When we put our faith in Christ, these are the blessings we have. We can take joy through trials. Not because we like the trial, but because we know who's fighting for us. Who is fighting with us. But there is a but to this passage. Reading verse 10 through 12, um, as I read it, you may have been trying to connect the dots. It's a little confusing. I had to read it a few times. I'll read it one more time here. Concerning the, this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that has come to you, searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things that have been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. Simply put, prophets understood that this blessing they have couldn't be kept to themselves. We don't take time to see the blessing God the blessings God has given us and keep them just for ourselves. As I was talking with our worship team last night, I would venture to say if we truly understood the blessings that are before us, we would not have any other recourse but to be a blessing. Let me say that again. If we truly understood the blessings God has bestowed upon us as children of God, co-heirs with Jesus. And we have no other recourse but to praise and honor our King. And we have no other recourse but to share that with people around us. 
the God we serve is so much greater than the box we put him in so often. This compartment of our life that we bring out on Sundays or we bring out on Wednesday nights or what have you. But the genuine faith Peter is talking about is a life that is centered on Christ. And a life that is centered on Christ, I see in Scripture as being one that praises God, honors Him, brings Him glory, and as these prophets did, share and preach the gospel. Amen? Amen? As I read this, I see Peter's heart that we cannot be selfish with what God has given us. We must be so filled with the Spirit of God that we cannot help but give it to others. And that doesn't always happen in, in speech. In fact, happens much louder in action very often. Taking time to pray and walk through someone in trial. When it's not convenient. And as I said before, taking time daily to take stock of what God has done and is doing. I have a note in my office. Paul mentioned it, I think, last year sometime. But I came across this quote, which uh, hit me like a two by four across the head. But it simply says, What if you only get tomorrow? what you thank God for today. Say that again. What if you only get tomorrow what you thank God for today? Be blessed. Please be blessed. And if you have not partaken in that blessing yet, and you have not come into relationship with God yet, I urge you, Ask questions. Seek out answers. Come talk to me. Come talk to Ben. Talk to this person next to you. I really don't care. Let's do this thing. Come into right relationship with God. And those of us that are in right relationship with God and have that genuine faith, let us be movers for God. Amen? Amen. Be blessed, but be a blessing. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love and how you care for us. We thank you for the blessings that we have. Lord, I'm not talking about the earthly things that fade away. I'm talking about the heavenly blessings you have given us by the grace given by you. Lord, that you would send your only son to die for us, wash us clean, that you would adopt us into your family. Lord, I first pray for that. We don't take that for granted. And two, that we would Live that out in a powerful way. Not doing it perfect, but doing it with a heart to serve you. To love and have compassion for those around us. And to share with them the hope we have and that they can have as well. Lord, we thank you for this day. It's in your name. Amen. And if you would stand for our benediction this morning. Surprisingly, it comes from 1 Peter. To God's elect, exiles scattered throughout, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit 
to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Praise be to God the Father. Have a great week. Thank you for coming this morning. And be blessed and be a blessing.